fresh water, it was probably to escape its predators. But they also had primitive lungs and followed. Interesting to see the limbs moving in three dimensions. Mm. Dr. Clack was intrigued by the limbs of our early yeah. ancestor. Um, I would expect these bones to be moving backwards and forwards relative to the humerus, oh. which they don't seem to be doing. There are clues in a fish still swimming in Australian waters, the spotted handfish. It uses its slightly modified fins to clasp rocks on the sea floor or to wait in ambush for its prey. So a canthostega might have been doing something similar in its swampy river. It could have been pushing aside reeds and undergrowth that you can't really do with fins. We see the environment as being monsoonal, similar in some ways to the Amazon rainforest. And you have to imagine a swamp-filled environment um, with lots of weedy undergrowth, as well as um, leaves falling in from the trees that lived on the riverbank. The early trees, by chance, not only dropped their leaves, more often they dropped entire branches. These would pile up in the shallows and provide an ideal hiding place. through such a tangled pile of branches, hands with fingers would be very useful. Possibly this was the reason our ancestor developed limbs. Because these things were air breathing and they were living in perhaps stagnant water, they were using their hands as props to raise the head out of the water so that they could breathe the air. Chance has always seemed to play a part in evolution. Ultimately, once you've got these slightly um, intermediate types of adaptations that, that are adapted to neither land nor water, but a bit of both, then you can build on that uh, and gradually, over time, become adapted to, to um, more and more to land living properly. There was one more step to take. The creature that was first to walk on land would not be Ancanthostega. known footsteps on land are here on the west coast of Ireland. This was once a swamp, the foot of the Caledonian mountains. These footprints were found in 1992 
there were 260 steps made by an animal which put weight on the ground and moved its right and left feet forward alternately, like reptiles walk today. Those first footsteps may have been at night when it was cooler and safer. The earliest known animal to walk on land is called pedipes and came ashore perhaps 348 million years ago. Those first tentative steps across land were to change the earth forever. Once life had conquered the land, nothing seemed to be able to stop it. For almost another 100 million years, life spread across the world. But one dramatic moment in time would see the virtual extinction of all species. These rocks are in an area of dry and arid country in South Africa, known as the Great Karoo. This was once a stream bed about 250 million years ago. In the rocks are the tracks of the strange creatures which ruled the earth before the dinosaurs. Dr. Roger Smith of the South African Museum has studied these creatures for years. Here's a fantastic trackway of a dinocephalian and it tells us quite a lot about this, how this animal walked. I'll just pose myself into its tracks and we'll see if we can move like a dinocephalian. The animal that made these tracks was around nine feet, perhaps the length of a Komodo dragon today. These extinct creatures were reptiles, but they had some of the same characteristics that mammals have today. Dr. Smith is fascinated as to why they all became extinct at the same time. We know very little about them. It is thought they laid eggs, as do reptiles today. Yet for millions of years, they seem to be the dominant animals on the Earth. Some were herbivores and some predators with large and sharp fangs. The mammal-like reptiles are not as well known as the dinosaurs. Perhaps it would become as quite a surprise to know that there was such uh, a diversity of very large, very successful, very well adapted animals, and in fact, uh, animals from which uh, um, are formed our human ancestors way back, that they were around at least 50 million years before the dinosaurs, so that the dinosaurs weren't the first ruling reptiles, in fact, of the planet.
but their legacy was perhaps crucial for the miracle planet. This is the world about 250 million years ago. Plants were abundant, so too was oxygen. Amongst the strange mammal-like reptiles, one is thought to be the distant ancestor of mammals. Now the Therapsis are now completely extinct, but around 250 million years ago, they, they uh, were the most common, the most widespread animal on the land surfaces of, of uh, both Gondwana and of uh, Laurasia, that whole supercontinent of Pangaea. These were the ruling animals at that time. Now, the other uh, interesting thing about these animals is they were tra a transitional form between reptiles and mammals. So they were neither true reptiles nor were they proper mammals yet. This was almost a crossroad in evolution. It's this creature called a cynodont which is believed to be the ancestor of mammals. While this little lizard-like creature is thought to be the ancestor of dinosaurs. The moment when 95% of species went extinct is marked clearly by a boundary line, where the rocks seem to change. Below that line, there was rich and varied life. Above, virtually nothing. Moist conditions. They are this bluish gray color, uh, typical of uh, soils which are almost permanently saturated with high water tables and cool conditions. As we pass through the boundary, through the extinction event, we go into these dark reddish brown mud rocks. Here at the same time, it is also possible to see color changes in the rocks. The geological evidence seems to point towards a massive rise in global temperature, also a sudden decrease in oxygen levels. These are the fossilized remains of animals clustered around what Dr. Smith calls the last pool. He thinks that this may have been a drying up water hole which attracted many that were desperate to drink. But as the water dried, they could not move away and died of thirst. We would look at layer by layer through up to that boundary and of, of uh, all the Permian fauna, only about 5% uh, actually got through. So this was 95% extinction of the animals and of the plants that were around uh, on the land surface at that time. And this is being backed up by similar work being done in the oceans, but it's a very, very catastrophic, in fact, the, the most catastrophic cat uh, uh, mass extinction we, that we've ever recorded. In this fossilized picture of death, it seems almost as if life had gone full circle. It had survived fire and ice and had grown after the rise of oxygen, seeming to end when once again the climate changed. The changes brought about by the mass extinction came from the Earth itself, the most massive outpourings of lava and gas ever known. But out of death, came life. 